First, create a panel. I'll just turn down the color opacity to zero. Rename the panel to character selection. Also, this is not just for character selection, you can use this to any UI you have like items, menu. Now create a button. I will name it char1. Now on the canvas. Go to canvas scaler. And change UI scale mode to scale with screen size. And change reference resolution to 2048 by 2048. Now go back to the button and change the text and scale. Then on the character selection panel. And add a component called grid layout group. Change the child alignment, cell size, and spacing, depending on where you want your button to be positioned. Then duplicate the button, have as many as you want. I'm just renaming the buttons here. Next, create an empty game object and rename it to indicator. Then add an image as the child of the indicator. Now, add a sprite to the image. And position the image the way you want. I want it on the top. Make sure that the width and height of the indicator are the same as the buttons. Position the indicator to one of the buttons, so you have an idea how it looks like, and reposition the image. Next, create a C-sharp script and name it Character Select. First, an array rec transform called Character Button. Char BTN in short. And another rec transform called Indicator. On the update function, we need to check if the right array key and left array key are press. If the right or left key is press then the indicator needs to move. To do that we need an integer that tells what button it should move to. Add an integer name indicator position, indicator POS in short. If the right arrow key is pressed then increment indicator position. We also need to limit, how much indicator position can increment. And that limit is the number of buttons we have. Now just copy this if statement, for our left arrow press. We also need an else, because if the indicator goes to the last button, then the indicator has to go back to the first button meaning our indicator position has to go back to zero. Now for the left arrow press, it's the reverse of the right arrow press. So when the indicator goes to the first button, 
then when the left arrow key is press again, then the indicator should go to the last button. Now we need to assign this position to the indicator object. Also, make the rect transform serialize field so we can see it in the inspector. Now the last thing we need is to control the movement of our indicator. Because right now if test this right now, it's gonna look like this. First, we need a serialize field float name move delay. And a private float name move timer. Now let's create a timer. If move timer is less than move delay, then increment by time delta time. Next every time the right or left key is press, the move timer should be equals to zero. Now add another if statement inside the key press if statement. Also, I forgot to change this if statement it should be greater than zero instead. Now let's assign our buttons and the indicator, make sure it's in order. Make sure move delay has a value, I recommend 0.2. Now, let's add a select function, first check if a key is a press, like a spacebar you can put any key you want here. The indicator position is the one you will use a lot here. As an addition, we can add a hover function, so we can also use our mouse cursor. Let's create a public function called hover on button with a parameter integer name button position. And assign that parameter to our indicator position variable. Now go to all the buttons and add an event trigger. And choose pointer enter. Next. Assign the character selection panel, that has the character select script. 
and choose the hover on button function. To make it easy to assign this to all buttons, just copy the component. Now assign the right parameter for each buttons. Remember that we start from zero. And lastly, add a function button click. I'm just going to copy this debug line for example. Now assign the character selection panel to the unclick of all buttons. That is all, thank you for watching.